freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for ooh, the RBC Canadian Open. Joining me to break it all down, Greg Ducharm is here. Greg, just, just, just say it. <laughs> what a week! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it couldn't, it, it couldn't end up more perfect. We <laughs> talked about this last night. I mean, this has been a historic week in the game of golf, and today we added another bit of history, an unexpected bit of history today. Uh, we, you know, we've been doing this for the last couple of weeks where we're like, oh, we're going to build our way into it. We'll talk about the early movers, a couple of notables, then we'll eventually get to the, no, we got to jump right into this thing because we went four holes with Nick Taylor and Tommy Fleetwood in a playoff, both looking for massive wins. Nick Taylor trying to become the first Canadian in 69 years to win the Canadian Open. Tommy Fleetwood looking for his first PGA Tour victory and to even get into this playoff, Greg. Um, what a run at the end here. Tommy Fleetwood makes, or excuse me, Nick Taylor makes birdies on 17 and 18. And then Tommy Fleetwood still has holes to go. And he's standing on 18 T a par five. That's playing well under par with a chance to play spoiler and win this thing in regulation. Yeah. that We, sh- we should be done with this whole thing right now. Right. <laughs> in, re- in reality, this podcast should be in the books over done because Tommy Fleetwood should be, I mean, you make four on that hole. You should just make four on 18 and he hits iron off the tee into the rough lays up into the rough. And, and then the best thing he could have done is get it on the green. He does. And, and it was a really nice two putt, but no, he had no putt to win that tournament. Um, and look to me to, you know, say you should make four. There is probably a little bit extreme. Um, but you should at least have a, a, you know, a chance, a makeable birdie opportunity. He was scrambling just to get into the playoff. It, it was the easiest hole on the golf course on Sunday. So it's not, it's not completely unrealistic. It's, yeah. You should at least have a, a, a look at a birdie, but he, he did not. So we go to a playoff and it's 18, 18, nine back to 18. Um, you know, what part of you, it was, it was kind of bizarre actually, before we get to that playoff, because Nick Taylor, uh, I mean, he he makes a nice little putt on 18 himself to get into this playoff. And he gives us the fist pump. The crowd's going nuts. And then he's got to play the sit and wait game. Yeah. And it's, you know, quite a wait. He's watching on somebody was down there with a cell phone. Uh, he's watching Tommy play 18. But before that, he had been hitting some balls on, on the range. Uh, there was quite a bit of time. I mean, you look at what he did after shooting 75 in the opening round. Um, and then I think he was like 120th and then tied 47th and then tied eighth. And I was saying last night with you, Rick, that it's very unlikely that somebody has this trajectory and, and does it again on Sunday and ends up winning the tournament. Uh, and, and he goes out there and shoots 66. He plays a beautiful round of golf. I mean, he does everything that you should do. He's hitting it close with his irons, hitting it in there to 10, 15 feet all day uh, and, and is pouring in the putts. I mean, it was a beautiful putting display out of, out of Nick Taylor today. Uh, and there were many clutch moments, which was really cool to see. Um, you saw a little emotion out of him, right? A lot of these, a lot of these players, you think of uh, Corey Connors, Nick Taylor, Adam Hadwin, Taylor Pendrith. They're, they're very stoic. They're, they're not very animated. Uh, but there were a couple of fist bumps here from Nick Taylor where you could see he was in he was in the heat of battle today. And that was really cool to watch. You could tell. I mean, he he knew what it meant to him. It They were they were 15 deep all day long with Nick Taylor. I, I mean, it was it was pretty. I, I know. I know. So part of me knows that the whole like, oh, we love golf and we have to have a, a Canadian. I feel like that's a little overblown. I'll admit, I think it's a little overblown. However, you wouldn't know that by the gallery. So maybe it's not overblown. Well, this is the, this is the one event where you're going to see that for any of them who are in the mix, right? They, they want, they wanted this title, this one, this was a, a major championship in Canada today, right? It's their national open. 
uh, and and it feels they feel like they've been starved. But over the past couple of years, they've started to get teased a little bit. Right? You started to have some really good players in the mix, other than just Mike Weir. I mean, Jim Nance was talking about it on the broadcast today. You know, there were many years where there wasn't really, other than Mike Weir, there wasn't really a Canadian contender. And now you have what five or six of them. I mean, you've had three winners this year on tour already. Uh, I mean, not that they were all in contention this week, but Corey Connors, Adam Hadwin, uh, Adam Svensson, Mackenzie Hughes. Um, and then you even have guys like Roger Sloan who are very capable of winning PGA Tour events. So it, it's gotten a lot deeper in Canadian golf. Uh, they've made a big push to improve uh, with, with um, what is it, Golf Canada? They, they've really put a lot of effort into creating and, and developing their talent. And finally, it shows through. The first playoff hole was number 18. They both make birdie. Second playoff hole, number 18. They both make par. Third playoff hole, number nine. That's par three. They both have pretty decent looks at it. Make par. The fourth playoff hole, back to 18. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood is probably... I don't know, 15, 18 feet away from birdie, kind of a similar line that he has had uh, in earlier in this playoff. And Nick Taylor is on the front of the green, Greg, 72 feet away. And I'm running through all the, the permutations. Okay. If he, if he gets it up there, what if he, what if he leaves it six feet short? Now he's going to have six feet. Then Tommy can put the pressure on yada, yada, yada. No permutations needed. Nick Taylor rolls in a 72-footer. Walk it off, Joe Carter, for the victory in Canada, and the place goes absolutely bonkers. Right in the middle, up going up over a little ridge, right? And, and you're looking at it. I don't know if you were with me, Rick, but I'm thinking, that's got to go a little bit. And then it climbed the hill. I was, oh, that guy, that climbed the hill nicely. That's got enough, and then it's a foot away. You can't believe, and then it's gone, and it's over. The thing's over. You know, it had the feeling of a Kramer Hickok Harris English eight hole playoff at Travelers, where it's kind of, you know, I, I don't want to say boring, but it's kind of boring. It's kind of boring. Nobody's really doing it. It's like uh, who's going to avoid the big mistake, uh, and then this happens, and it, so it goes from. Can, uh, yeah, it's another playoff hole. Okay, he, Tommy's 15 feet. We got three putt potential from Nick Taylor. This feels like this kind of feels like a half, and then all of a sudden it's it's not, and it's over, and the place explodes. It, it, that was really cool. The finish, the the rain falling, the Canadian fans going absolutely nuts. I mean, you've seen great finishes before on the PGA tour. It happens all the time, uh, but this one just felt a little more intense, a little more magical. It felt like there was a hero. It felt like the end of a movie, right? If Nick Taylor got carried off the green on a crowd, uh, you know, on top of a crowd, I wouldn't be surprised. It had that kind of feel. And that does, that's not always the case in golf. Well, Adam Hadwin almost got carried off the green. We'll, we'll, see, <laughs> we'll see if we have that in a second. It, it is, I mean, let, let's just kind of put this into perspective here. So we've got like, uh, you know, rarely do you even get a walk off, right? Something like a walk off, right? Uh, right. Where the place explodes. And if you do, it is at least somewhat realistic. Oh, this guy's got 20 feet or whatever. Um, this was so unrealistic. It reminded me of... What was it? Rom 66 footer in a playoff against yeah. DJ at the BMW. And I'm not sure that was actually like a walk off, walk off, or if DJ still had the putt, but that's like the last time I remember being utterly shocked at an outcome like that. Maybe Rom at Tory Pines, not in the US Open, uh, but his first, win. It, 2000, his first win, which yeah. is 2017. Yeah. That was probably a similar, I think that was like, in the 60 in the neighborhood of 60 feet or something um but he was so still, there were still groups coming in after that yeah right? yeah yeah that's a good point i think it sealed it though but it but i get i get your point it wasn't to end up end a playoff it's it's very 
shocking when something like that happens. Well, we we have the putt. Let's 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 watch it here. Leaf flag. Good pace. Are you serious? Oh my goodness! Glorious and free. Glorious and free, says Jim. Nance. Right? I mean that that's a I don't know. That call that that's such a rare situation. You know, this is the this is the Canadian Open. It's the week before a major. It's the week before a major. And you have just had a week fu- filled with the biggest off the golf course news that the game of golf has ever seen. And all of a sudden you have this like miraculous finish to a tournament where there's a, there's a hero that it's, it's very rare. It's very rare. That was historic. Bedlam so much so that everybody who was greenside, uh, started to celebrate, started to run on to the green and it makes security's job very difficult to yeah. decide who should be there and who shouldn't be there. And <laughs> Adwin, our, our desert Fox, uh, got caught up in the mix a little bit here. Play it, Josh. Uh, for they those took a hit for those for those just listening that's adam hadwin with bottle of champagne and an absolute form tackle by security wrap him up take him down leave no room for error like leave no doubt is what that security guard did erase this man <laughs> the, i mean what, what's adam hadwin saying like do you know who i am i don't know man <laughs> i'm the desert fox <laughs> That that's uh, I think you would have got 15 in the NFL for for, uh, you know, landing with your own body <laughs> impact on him. Right? Absolutely. Unnecessary roughness. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'll, tell man. I'll tell you what. So it, 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 all th- seriously, though, it was. So what happened? What ended up happening at at, um, at Oak Hill is for the last couple of holes the the ropes like did not matter and everyone just started like piling in and security had the job of like trying to figure out who's supposed to be in and who's supposed to be out and it was insanity and this guy's just i don't know why he thought like a fa- i don't i don't know but like he just said i'm not gonna get screwed on this one i'm gonna cover my butt and take him down it, it's a hard thing and look this doesn't happen very often like you think of Keough Island when Phil wins the PGA. Um, you think of Tiger Woods at at the Tour Championship in 2019, right? These are historic moments. They're legendary moments. The oldest player ever to win a a major championship. Uh, Tiger Woods on a comeback after his back surgery. These are these are not the winner of a normal PGA tour event, right? It doesn't happen in this kind of scenario, but you have the the Canadian winning his national open for the first time in what? 69 years. That's, you know, pretty memorable stuff. And then you add to it that he made a 72 foot walk off to do it. It's just crazy. Yeah. 72 feet, by the way, is like less than 1% like the uh, the probability of 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 that putt like stroke gained wise and how often that goes in it's like less than less than 1% so to 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 use your less than 1% in, in that moment uh would be would be very very sick uh Nick Taylor now thrice a winner on the PGA Tour 2014 Sanderson Farms big gap to the 2020 Pebble Beach Pro where he went wire to wire and then here in Canada 2023 RBC Canadian Open I'll tell you what I did not think Nick Taylor was going to have a good week. Um, I thought his stuff was a little pale. Maybe I should have recognized the pale play of the week <laughs> um, coming into the week. But I'll tell you what, when we were in Phoenix, I was impressed with him because he stared down John Rahm. He stared down Scotty Scheffler, and he just would not go away from that championship. Um, and despite I didn't think he was playing all that well coming in, like when he got into the moment, he was not backing down off of it. Yeah, look, pale. I mean, he misses last two cuts as well. That usually hurts the pale play of the week. 
Um, but it, it's something there's something with Nick Taylor where he's been able to pop up every once in a while. He had a really nice run at the Valspar, a really nice run at the Valero Texas Open as well. So there have been moments where you've seen really good play from him. Um, and I understand why you wouldn't think. I mean, he's a he's a name you kind of click on on rickrungood.com and can kind of keep on moving. Uh, like right. It, it, it's not a it's not a disaster, but there's it, no reason. But when, when you look at this golf course, I think it really does fit his game in a way. It was well suited for him. Uh, and, and he took advantage of wedge opportunities. He was great when he, um, you know, like you take out that four hole stretch three through six and you look at the back nine and there's a ton of wedge opportunities and he's a good wedge player. He showed it this week. He took advantage of those chances, took advantage of those opportunities uh, in large part because he was putting the ball in the fairway. And that's what Nick Taylor does. So I, I do think while I agree with you, things were a little pale coming in. It, it definitely suited his strengths and his strengths were on form this week. Got another voice to the conversation. We've got him. Patrick McDonald is here. Josh, throw him in the mix, please. Thank you kindly. Patrick, can you believe what you just saw? Absolutely disgusting. Are we talking about the Canadians cheering when Tommy Fleetwood's ball found the sand on the fourth playoff hole? I thought they were supposed to be nicer up there in the north. Um, it was ridiculous, not. though. What a what a weird playoff. It kind of gave me shades of that Bryson Cantley one at Caves Valley a couple years ago. It seemed like no one really wanted to win it. And then it's like, holy cow, Nick Taylor, 72 feet. How are we doing? I had a, I doing had this? a comparison, Patrick, to the Harris English Kramer Hickok one at Travelers. Yeah. So same, that was a good one. same feel. And yeah. I had a comparison to John Rahm making a 66 footer on Dustin Johnson, which was another long putt in a playoff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, all, all very good. Probably, uh, probably better than mine that I threw out there. So, uh, all, all wel good welcome to join the conversation. Yes. Well, you've joined in just in part for just in time for the Tommy Fleetwood portion of the show. Uh, Greg uh, lost in the monumental Canadian victory was the Tommy Fleetwood still winless on the PGA tour conversation not for lack of trying although maybe maybe made a mess of 18 we alluded to it a little bit there in in regulation but tommy has been playing some of the better golf uh in recent years as of late and no surprise to see him in the mix but still cannot get across the finish line no and again his ball striking's coming back which is nice you're starting to see this is the this is tommy fleetwood in real form and we're back to the point now where the question is can tommy fleetwood do something clutch and this was a, I think, a step in the right direction. I, I think the shot, the wedge shots he hit at 16 and 17 today um, and, and holding those putts were really clutch. Um, I thought the putt he made in the first playoff hole was awesome. And, you know, that's the kind of moment you're waiting for from a Tommy Fleetwood. But mixed in between these great moments are moments where it feels like you don't, you don't want to win. You don't want to step across the line. Um, an 18 in regulation is the most disappointing. No question about it. It it just, it's so disappointing. Uh, and, you know, in the playoff, I, he had some good shots, some lackluster ones, you know, disappointing to hit it into the grandstand on your second. Um, but still, the wedge shot gave himself an opportunity. So, look, he's like teetering on the brink. And I did see some really clutch moments that I think is a, a step in the right direction, but definitely a fair share of disappointing ones too. Yeah. Another close call for Tommy Fleetwood uh, here, Patrick. And it was, uh, I mean, certainly it was, it was valiant to get into the playoff. He goes 64, 67 on the weekend did make those two late birdies to give everybody a scare. But uh, I think, I think the story at the end of the day is just another, another missed opportunity. I mean, that was a master class on playing not to lose on the 72nd hole. Yeah. You you heard Colt Nose there. I think, yes, he might have gotten iced a little bit. Uh, you know, the Canadians pulled a timeout on him late in the game, and it, it clearly affected him. He misses the fairway. That's fine. I can forgive that. What I cannot forgive is compounding the mistake with that layup. And Colt Nose even said it. He's right there on the ground. He had the five wood in his hand 
He put it behind the ball. He must have not liked it, but I mean, I saw the back of that ball on my TV. I don't want to question Tommy Fleetwood, but I'm going to. I don't know how you don't just rip it up there to the left side. And the number one cardinal sin, like I feel like a complete idiot when I lay up with an iron and either hit it in the water or hit it in the rough. So I can't imagine how someone who is good at golf who does it for a living, how he felt after that. And you saw it with that wedge shot, the third in regulation, him and his caddy were kind of like getting a little testy. There was a little, yeah, uh, I, yeah. there was a little awkwardness to it. Um, and so it, it, it was, it, it was a little more testy Patrick than a guy who is an up and down away from victory would normally be right that you see that on uh you know Friday afternoon on 18 when you're two shots out of the cut line or three shots like that that is that's very much a winning moment you could tell there was a little uh a little something and, and look I, I know Tommy played great he had 71 fantastic holes a, a great playoff putt there on the first one to keep himself alive missed two opportunities in the playoff as well he was minus 400 to win on the tee on number 18 and he didn't get the job done uh, you know, you could do the odds there. What's that like? Uh, seventy ish, eighty ish percent. Yeah. Um, and he didn't get a job, the job done. And honestly, the uh, the three wood, uh, into it's the, the uh, mini driver. Yeah, yeah, the burner. That club is sick. By the way, I need it's to get awesome. one of those. I, uh, we we are available. Maybe not Greg. He's got ties. Taylor made. We need the mini driver. We will shill that bad boy. Send it our way. I need one. The the uh the one that flared super right. I don't think it was the mini one. It was the second playoff hole when uh maybe a five wood or whatever it was. That was very reminiscent of the Honda Classic. Uh, I had the same thought. Yep. What was that? Twenty twenty. It had to be. Uh, twenty. Yeah. No, no, no. Because that's when Sungjae won. Yeah. Didn't Tommy? Yo, was it, it was, was that? Here. Didn't Tommy was put it? in the water and Sungjae won? Oh, you know, I remember putting in the water. I don't remember uh, Sungjae winning. Was it Nick Taylor the one in the back? Or was it Mackenzie Hughes who was in the back giving the whole like, oh, those are some cojones for Sungjae taking that line? That was, was it Mackenzie. Oh, I, I think, thought we were going to go full circle. No, <laughs> no. But, I, you know, I wondered, Patrick, before that shot, I wondered if his decision to lay up was influenced by that. Um, You know, on 18 of regulation, did he lay up because... He's gotten in trouble before in that situation. I, I don't know, but it, it it's, a, it's a good pull. Yeah. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm disappointed for a multitude of reasons. I thought this was my chance to get back into the one and done space. I had a whole speech lined up for you guys. I had to trash it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, obviously it comes up short, but here we are. Tough, tough, tough. All right, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to hit a couple of quick notables here. We are going to do the one and done and the betting stuff, but I'm I'm very close to declaring it you know what week. So we've got to do that as well. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. Someone hunted a hunter. This is the work of a serial killer. Think of things he can do a cop's job. Drop your weapon! Stand down! No one trusts a lone man in a while. Joe Pickett Season 2 is now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Use promo code PICKET for one month free trial. Credit card required. Terms apply. And we're back. Let me hit a couple of notables here. Uh, Terrell Hatton posts, Patrick. Uh, 16 under par, which did not get into a playoff. Obviously, one shot off, but it hung around for a while. He goes 72, 64, 72, 64. He made 10, count them, 10 birdies on Sunday, uh, but probably not happy about that double on eight. Yeah, one of the easier holes, too. And even, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video of the volunteer taking off her socks, taking off her shoes, getting in there, identifying Turtles golf ball in and out. Like a bank job, it was his ball. Leads to a double bogey. Par, and he wins the tournament. It's pretty incredible. But this is a guy, it is kind of shocking to me, given how consistent, how good he is. He's really kind of gotten back into the gym. He's talked about a lot. He's taking care of his health a lot more. Uh, similar to that 2020 season when he won the Arnold Palmer Invitational. But it is 
weird that this guy only has one PGA Tour one, given the quality of his golf this year. He's playing like a top six player in the world, maybe. I would reckon. I would argue. The uh, numbers are insane. They and it's so well rounded too. I, I think that's what's most impressive about it. Uh, he ranks inside the top. I was looking at his stats before the Memorial. He was the only player inside the top 45 in each strokes game category over the last six months, I believed at the time. And okay. it's just really impressive. He's going to get better than that because he was inside the top 35 in all of them this week as well. Uh, Greg, I, I agree. It's it, it, there's listen, there's only so many trophies and there's a lot of guys who can win them, but Terrell Hatton knocks on the door weekly. You think about uh, a performance like this with one round, he, uh, he makes 10 birdies. Another round, he makes nine birdies. The tournament that he's won on the PGA Tour is the one, one of the most, I mean, that, that Arnold Palmer Invitational he won was impossible. It was the hardest golf course I've, I, I mean, it, it, was, it was impossible to stop a ball on the green. So that well-rounded game works in birdie fests. It works in difficult golf courses it it will work i believe it should work in majors um and and that's kind of a next step for him we get tyrell hatton contending in a major championship the game is in a prime position for that and you know among the top players in the world there's always questions about what happens with the putter but he's really a quite a good putter uh and very consistent putter I have very little issues uh, or worry with his putting stroke. So uh, yeah, I think I think Tyrrell Hatton's got it all, and it, he's just got to get a, a, you know across a little hump. Maybe it's the way that he treats himself on the golf course. I don't I don't know if that's a good thing for him or if that hurts him, but you know his game is there. There's no question about it. Maybe a little self love he needs to practice out on the yeah. golf course. Uh, Rory McIlroy. Let's hit Rory, and then we can we can move along here. Uh, Seventy two on Sunday, Patrick, which started pretty much with a whimper. Out in thirty eight, that's two over. Didn't make his first birdie until number twelve. He equalizes his round at sixteen with another birdie. Um, it will not be three in a row for Rory. He will earn another top ten finish, and he will roll on to LACC with uh, what eight and a half years between major championship wins. Eight and a half years with uh, three straight top 10 finishes, four straight top 10 finishes in the U S open itself. The driver looked a lot better. I don't, I don't, there are some shots where it felt like his shoulders were a little bit open. I might just be like getting way too into the details with that. Uh, and PGA splits, Ron Kloss uh, for Bettsburg was kind of tracking his wedge numbers, every wedge shot this week. And, uh, they weren't as bad as as last week. We'll just put it that way. He was, you know, gaining strokes with his wedges, which is which is good for Rory McIlroy. Uh, but today it felt like I haven't looked at the stats. It just felt like he couldn't make a putt to save his life. Uh, I would assume the stats back it up. Um, and when your first birdie comes on the twelfth hole in the final round, when you enter two strokes off the lead with a birdie fest setup, especially on the back nine, uh, it's not a good look. But Colt Nose said he's really looking forward to next week. We've heard it all from Rory McIlroy heading into major championships. It is win or bust at this stage in his career. Whether that's fair or not, that's a completely different conversation. But uh, I think it was a good tune-up, and we talked about it last week. I like that Rory is kind of playing through uh, some of these changes in his swing instead of just going home and practicing. So it, it should suit him well for, for next week. Lost two and a half strokes putting or 2.1 strokes putting on Sunday, but uh, was a pretty big gainer for the week 19, 3.6 to the positive. Looking at the stats for the week as a whole, Greg, uh, yeah, driver work, six strokes there, second in the field, top 20 in putting, top 50 in the other two major strokes gained categories. Uh, what's the state of the union on Rory McElroy heading to Los Angeles? It's not sharp, um, but you look at a guy that's not sharp and he's got three straight top 10 finishes. It just tells you what kind of player we're dealing with here. Um, and we know, we obviously know that it's no surprise. It's no news, but this is, this could be really close. And, and uh, you look at LACC and how many of those wedge shots are you going to get? I mean, this back nine at LACC is a, mo I mean, it's a beast. You're not going to be hitting eight, nine wedges into greens here. You know, you know, so I think it kind of suits right into Rory's game. 
Um, maybe other than the firm and fast element, if you think that hurts Rory, which I go back and forth on, I think this plays right into his hands. You got wider fairways here at this U.S. Open. Um, I'm, I was really po- feeling po- quite positive about the putting. I thought in yesterday's round, you saw a lot of much, whether they went in or not, better putts, um, better contact on the face. It, it just looked better. And today we missed a lot of it on the broadcast because he was out of contention. Stats obviously don't look very good. Um, but I, I give him a pat. This is all about major championships for him. So heading into next week, I think Rory's in a prime spot. I also think that his world is in a strange way simplified now. Like we talked about briefly last night, Rick, I, I don't think Rory's going to be writing letters to any congressman. I don't think he's going to be, you know, looking at the FTC or the DOJ and getting involved in any of that stuff. So it, this is now just about golf now, um, which I think is a good place for him to be. I was going to say, what, what if Rory on like Tuesday's presser it just announced his run for the presidency? But I guess <laughs> as a Northern Irishman who's also not, is he 35 yet? I don't even know. Nah, he's, so. he's one year too young. Got to wait until 28. <laughs> Fortunately, a couple of ways to the, to be, uh, to be ineligible, I think, but, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll run for some type of office. Look after this week, uh, nothing is surprising. Honestly, nothing would surprise me. Honestly, seriously, seriously. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> what I do know is we had an okay week on the bets. So do we have the graphic please, Josh? Thank you kindly. Three and one. That was Oliver shaking in the corner. Uh, three and one on the matchups. Excuse me. Two, one and one. Corey Connors over Cam Young. Greg, piece of cake for you. Oh, such a breeze. Uh, and Corey was a little bit of a letdown, but Cam Young's been struggling a little bit. So kind of picking on a, you know, a weak defender, which is crazy to say it's Cam Young. But I like the plus money on that. So there we go. Easy. Cash it. I pushed Adrian Moronk uh, and Keith Mitchell. Patrick, you got, how about this one? Lee Hodges and Harry Hall. You went deep down the board to find your matchup. Yeah, as I typically do. But uh, I don't want to take the the heat off Kyle's minus 240 loser. Wait, <laughs> yeah, this was pretty tough. So it was Ludwig Aberg over Sam Bennett. Aberg finished T25. Bennett finished T20, so that's one shot. Bennett nips him with a 68 uh, to, to Ludwig 69 on Sunday, and, and KP lays the juice, and it was not worth the squeeze. That KP is is like a, he's like a kid in a candy store. Next week is going to be all about Gordon Sargent at the yeah. U.S. Open, maybe yeah. Thor Bjornsson, too. He didn't really see his name in the list this week. Uh, these young guys, he's just... They're so hard to predict. They're so hard to predict. I mean, they're all they're all extremely talented. Just let you know, it's like who's going to play well, if any of them. It's not it's not about talent. So it's a that's a tough, risky game to be playing. We got two out of the four winning uh, finishing positions. Dylan Wu top forty, cash it. Aaron Rye top twenty, cash. That was three to one. Patrick hat tip to you, and he did. I think much better than T20. Uh, but it would have been a real nice sweep for you, Patty, if you got. Tommy lad at 22 to one, but unfortunately that is not going to go into your, uh, into your winnings. Yeah. I thought this week was about to be full on Billy Madison. I'm the smartest man alive at the spelling bee, uh, situation, but unfortunately Tommy Fleetwood's compounding mistakes on the 72nd hole had other plans for Patrick. Shame, 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 shame. One and done update. Uh, Patrick, you do win the week pretty significantly though here because Tommy Fleetwood gets you a cool, let's see, $981,000, which is like $800,000 more than anybody else got because the vast majority of us went with Shane Lowry, 27,000, uh, Mark with Corey Connors, 102. I went with Matt Fitzpatrick, 102. So you had a good week here. You're still in last place, but you had a good week. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I need to stay humbled, but I had a whole speech planned about how I was going to pick off these national opens one by one by one. It would start with the Canadians. I then we'd go to the I U.S. Like Open. This, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll tell you right now who I'm picking next week. It's going to be one Jonathan Rahm. Have you seen his California stats? Have you seen his U.S. Open form? I don't know how many people have him left. Not I've many. never heard of a Jonathan Rahm. Jonathan Rahm. And then... Scottish Open, picking that one off. Open Championship, picking that one off. Uh, but, but unfortunately, that 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 Tommy Fleetwood debacle kind of threw that plan out the window, and I'm I'm scrambling. I am scrambling heavy at this moment. Uh, but John Rahm will win next week. Do Do you want to, Patrick? You want to? Could you welcome me into this? Do you want to do like a? We could do like a partner thing. You, you, I, and Sia are the only ones who have them available. I'm okay. I'm willing to go in with you on this if we can ensure Sia is not involved. Uh, well, I know we like to make fun of Sia a lot. He he's an easy target, like myself. Uh, we got a band together, but I would argue I am the mush this year. <laughs> I, I know. know that's kind of Sia's connotation. Sia Sia's like back in it now, but yeah, yeah he's I, right in the mix. Yeah, I, I don't want to impose myself on you, Rick. Okay. I mean, Jordan I Spieth missed the cut at Colonial when I picked him. Colin Morikawa withdrew before the final round. You were on that one. I was with so, him. Yeah. I, I would stay far away. It's like SpongeBob when he smells, and he calls himself ugly. That's me right now. I'm the smelly kid in class. No one wants to sit sit around me. Tough. Tough scene. All right. Well, um, I think I'm going to do it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm officially declaring it U.S. Open – week we are going to la lacc it's gonna be sick cannot wait we're gonna dive into it but first we're gonna take a quick break and hear a word from our partners get breaking news big news coming out of the nfl today highlights and instant reactions the largest final round comeback in four championship history we're down to the final four i just want to take time to analyze greatness shock winners and losers with a guy who's already a big winner cbs sports hq it's all sports all day long the North Course at Los Angeles Country Club, a George Thomas masterpiece. Greg, the word of the week will be Baranca. Can you wait? I cannot wait. Mm, love a good Baranca. Mm -hmm. uh, but this will be a very uh, interesting U.S. Open. It's, it's atypical. Uh, my read on it right now, it's atypical. Uh, you have really wide fairways. Yeah. You have very little rough. Um, but the rough you do have, you, we're already starting to see the videos. It's long. Yep. <clears throat> and it does not look easy. Uh, seems like it's going to be pretty firm and fast. It seems like there's a lot of undulation in the fairways. Uh, you're going to see the ball on the ground a lot this week, in my estimation. Some really cool green complexes. You got 290 yard, uh, 290 yard par three. Two of them. Two of them. And then, yeah, it, it's going to be. This is going to be very unique. And another par three that could play like 79 yards, and a par four yeah. that is drivable, but you can't see the green from. Right. The what is that number six? Is that number the blind? Six. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you've got. 13 or 14 where the freaking playboy mansion is now, this thing has it all Th this golf course has it all uh patrick greg's right this is not necessarily like a traditional usga setup right it's not winged foot thick rough the fairways are wide greg's absolutely right but there's a lot of camber there's a lot of angles there's a lot of undulation that essentially makes them uh, play much more narrow and if you are on kind of the wrong side of it you'll have a lot of blind shots into greens it, it is it, if you want options there's like 400 options on how to play every hole it, it's uh, unbelievable first glance based on my extensive research to this point it is as if kind of dirty mike and the boys hopped in the back of the red prius and for this conversation dirty mike and the boys are kapalua riviera Augusta with a hint of whistling straights, hence my love for John Rom this week. I think he won at three of those courses and was dominant at another. Uh, but yeah, it, it's going to be very fun. I think people are going to say it's kind of quirky. I've heard some Chambers Bay, some Jordan Spieth yeah. love as well. I don't, I don't hate that. Uh, so yeah, creativity. Got to hit it far off the tee. 
even though the fairways are wide, you got to be in the right portion of the fairway. And so it's going to, it's going to set up for a gr great week. I, I agree. Big I, win. I don't think you have to be super long. Uh, admittedly, I think it's going to be pretty firm. I'll be out there Monday. I'm spending all day Monday at LACC. I'm spending all day Tuesday at LACC. I will, if you need any intel, if you want me to slam a golf ball into a grandstand and see how far it bounces back, I can do that. Uh, if you need any research, I'm, I'm available. But Greg, I mean, uh, it's, I don't want to say, I don't want to say it's unfortunate, but just for like the second straight year, um, I think a lot of the early part of the week might be dominated by some live stuff, right? It, it felt, this is what yeah. happened. Brookline last year because Liv played uh, their uh, their very first event opposite of RBC Canadian Open last year. So it's it feels very similar to that where a lot of the early week conversation will be dominated by Liv. And then the closer we get um, to this thing kicking off on Thursday morning, uh, uh, like just the golf course takes over. And I do think the golf course will be the story, but it is going to wait until Thursday, right? And there's no way around it. This is... Uh, just the way it is. Uh, and hopefully this kind of marks the end of these stories being the biggest news in golf um, and, and dominating the inter the press room for the opening days of major championships. Hopefully that's all behind us. But I, I do think this is going to be an extremely unique test. And I've read a lot about it. I've looked at a lot of picture. I've, you know, I've done all the remote research that I think you can, but I definitely want all that stuff you're going to have tomorrow, Rick. So whatever you get, you get a video, you get a feeling, you get a, whatever it is, you see somebody slip and fall. I want to know about it. Um, cause I can't wait to see it. I, I think it's really, I'm curious about the end of this tournament cause it's big right all the holes on the back nine 13 in it's big boy golf yeah um and i want to know how that actually plays you know is it do you have to is a bomber going to be is this you know brooks dj rom scheffler kind of a deal or does it open it up to the creative guys which is my lean now the speeds of the world the the um you know, maybe a Shane Lowry who crushed my soul and wanted done this week. Maybe somebody like that. It, does this open up the field to anybody? I, and I can't wait to see it. I mean, a 290 yard par three. You got two of them. That is, it, it's so long. It it almost takes the distance advantage out of it in a strange way. Like it becomes yeah. a short game contest. Yeah, because like, it, how many guys are hitting the green? Right. You're, you're, and does it matter if it's a two iron or a five wood or a three wood? Is there a huge difference between those? I, I don't know. It, that, that, that's a short game contest. So that, that, I, I'm very right. curious. Go ahead. That hole is, uh, they play it as a par four sometimes for members. It's a flex. Depending on hole location, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of that. So. I'm glad they're not going to do that. They did it. At, they did it at Chambers Bay, didn't they? Change the par one day. Yes, they, they're not. Yes, and they're not going to do 18, that. Eighteen, right? Uh, it wasn't eighteen, was no. it? No, it wasn't eighteen. But, there were two holes. But, they yes, which is a day to nightmare. By the way, if you change par in the middle of a tournament, there's so, there's no reason for it anyway. Right? Yeah. Par is just a. Yeah, they're it, not. Gonna do it. it doesn't matter. Fugazi, Fugazi. There's a chance that uh, – I don't know if I have the whole numbers right. I can check in a second. But there's a chance. The pet, But it, par won't change. But there is a chance that seven, a par three, could play longer than six, a par four. So depending on where the tees are on six and where the tees are on seven, you could get a situation where a flip-flop. Which is pretty. Yeah, I, I heard them talk about a lot of uh, like Scott Langley, the USGA player relations, former PGA Tour player, a lot of half pars, like that's, the first hole being an easy par five. That's a George Thomas thing. George Thomas at the, um, did it at Riv, did it at Bel Air, where you get a very easy par five to start, where it plays like a four and a half and a very hard par four second, which will play to four and a half. And George Thomas like invented the half par. Yeah, so between these half pars and the flex hole, I'm going to have to get in the lab and whip something up. I'm not quite sure yet, but this George Thompson guy, I, li I like the 
cut of his cloth. Yeah, looks <laughs> Thomas. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are the other big storylines here? Because, you know, we don't have, I mean, I guess Phil is technically going for the career grand slam, but I don't know how realistic that is. You know, we don't have a, 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 a single season grand slam on the line. Is it, is it the eight and a half year drought for Roy McElroy? Is it like, what are the other, I feel like, you know, the masters or even uh, the PGA, because you could always say, Oh, well, if Ron wins this one, you know, he's, he's going to take the, take the the grand slam to the u.s open like what are the other storylines for this week well i mean brooks kepka is a pretty big yeah. storyline to me well, right absolutely yeah you know adding a third you know you get to six yikes and back to back and it'd be a second a win and a win if he, if he is able to win this u.s open so where is he still you know he's been great in the first two is brooks still the best player in majors like are we are we going to get this for an extended period of time um i think that's a really big storyline scheffler and rom are big storylines to me too i i think it is a i think a first timer a first time major winner i think is what we're going to get with really yeah front runners being xander Cantley, victor i think that that is a, a three-headed monster of guys who could break through and get their first. I, I like the way this place sets up for those guys. They're trending. I I think that would be interesting. Max. Max. I mean, the story for Max is like, dude, what are we doing at major championships? I mean, if he pulled it off, it'd be, it'd be unbelievable. It'd be, it would, I mean, he might never stop crying and he shouldn't. Right. But like, he's just got to get in content. He's just got to get in it. You gotta get in the fight. He's got to get, you in. know? Yeah. yeah. And he hasn't been uh, able to do that. He's the he's the only player inside the top ten in the world without a top ten in a major championship. The last player to win a major championship without a previous top ten. Wait, Webb Simpson, two thousand twelve Olympic Club. So he has a lot California going US against Open. him. I wouldn't have guessed. Uh, but go, going back to Greg's Brooks point, I'm very interested to see if the Live Golf cadence, their schedule, will have any effect on them because they are not playing across from national opens like the Canadian Open this week. They won't be playing across the Scottish Open. Brooks Kepka, known to play his best golf on week two. He has won all five of his major championships on week two, 19 times since 2014. He has played the week before a major championship. He has as many runner-ups as finishes outside the top 23. Zero missed cuts, all five of his wins. So for me... That might be kind of in the background to see uh, if it affects them in any way. Wow, that's pretty good. Patrick, I was thinking about you. Why don't we take John Rahm, parlay it with those Vegas Golden Knights, and see what number we can get for a little parade down the strip and John Rahm winning in L.A.? Uh, we'd get them what, like twelve to one at this point? Or are we talking se- a little bit? Are we better. talking series price or game five? I was gonna say series price. Okay, yeah, yes. that's. I mean, listen, just a little, little, little more. Ju- what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. I'm into it. Any other U.S. Open stuff? Um, we're gonna have you covered wall to wall next week. But anything else that we need to tease right now? No, I don't think so. I think I Colin Morcal was healthy, though. He's been posting out there. Okay. So, all right. Well, there's a lot to look forward to. There's there's a lot to look forward to. Um, we will be rocking and rolling this week with uh, pods and coverage from the site. I don't know when Kyle gets into town, but I'll be there tomorrow. I think he might get in on Tuesday. I'll have to check with him. But we'll be there, and it'll be cool. Appreciate you guys. Enjoyed it. Appreciate you, Rick. Uh, Josh does all the hard work behind the scenes. Thank you very much. Patrick McDonald at Amateur Status. Greg Ducharme with The Real GFD. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been The First Cut. We'll catch you next time. 